Watch what I do here, guys. Start the segment. <laughs> well, let me let me think of what you always go back. This is the Texags radio well, wait, rewind. I don't do it like this. Now you have a little a tendency to you get your legs crossed and you get excited. You get a little hand motions in there. All right, then do it. Do so it. They said, this is how David gets in there. He gets like this. And he goes. This is the Texags radio rewind, and they sit there and you look around the room and then you'll point out somebody and be like, "So what, what was on the show today? Tell me about the show. What's going on with you today? Why do you do it so rude?" <laughs> like, <laughs> It is text size rewind. Okay, <laughs> legs crossed. I don't talk. Uh, uh, all right. So yeah, yeah, we'll see if you get any promotions. Uh, today on the show, we talked about Jimbo's press conference. Does that that work for your liking? I, I'm uh, loving the okay, way you're Okay, thank you. Right now. Shereen Williams was on the show since I'm so angry and talked to people. She was great. Uh, we also had Tom Hart on Jimbo, which was fun as well. And my legs are still crossed. And we also got to know a little bit about the Gamecocks here on Tech Sags. Rewind. That's so awkward. I thought that was good. I like that. That was cool. I am. I'm gonna say this right now, and it, and I don't want. It's in October right now. I love being here. This is my the job I wanted. I'm, I'm being here. I got a great contract. I have an unbelievable chancellor. I have an unbelievable president. Unbelievable AD. That we're building something. We're recruiting great players. I really believe we're on the process of building something great. I plan on being here and fulfilling this contract and doing everything. I my family has roots here. I got ranches here. I hunt here. I love everything about this place. And and I and you don't and listen and I say that because listen nothing there's nothing going on there is there nothing happening there and I don't be disrespectful to anybody else I, I coached there it was a great place we won national championships it is one of the best you know best places in it's a wonderful place I love being an A and M and I plan on being an A and M here and fulfilling my whole contract I love everything about this place and, and let me tell you something else and the way this place has embraced me and my family and including our foundation. The things that are going on with our foundation, the way that people have embraced it, the way people have, have done everything here in College Station. I love everything about the people here, the administration here, and everybody in charge here and, and the people who run this organization. And I love it here. Yeah, I love it too. Jimbo, with great words there. And uh, with that, we start the go hour with Olin Buchanan, our Heisman Trophy voter and good friend. Good morning to you, OB. Good morning. Man, like, I could run that on repeat and we'd be fine. Uh, everything that we needed to hear, I think we heard. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh -oh. I needed to hear some more. You needed to hear. Well, well you followed up. Th there's two words that he used that, uh, that the old reporter, the old grizzled reporter in me. Yeah. It kind of peaked. There was, well, maybe two statements. It's, it's October. And I, and the other one is, I plan on being here. He didn't say, I will be here. I plan on being here. And the reason that peaks my, my ears there is I've been around long enough to I've seen coaches. I'm not saying this is the case with Jimbo. I think he was as emphatic as you could have hoped. But I've, been, I've seen enough coaches say, oh, I haven't talked to anybody where their wife or their agent has. Oh, I have no interest in this job at this time. You know, those kind of things. And they leave a little bit of a, a, a crack to, to wiggle out. I'm not saying that's what Jimbo did, but because of that, when I had a chance to ask him, I said, so would you, you, not, you wouldn't take a call from Scott Woodward just to make sure that absolutely that, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to hear you say, I am not leaving Texas A&M. In his mind. He said that. He said that, I'm yep. sure. But I think there's still these, there's this faction of Aggies that – that absolutely want to know that it's that, that that you know he's he's absolutely committed for the long haul here. How many times did he say "I love it here" in that one minute clip? I'd say three, four times, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, and I wrote down some of the things he said. I love being here. This is the job I wanted. I have a great contract. That's three right there. Wanted right? past tense. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable chancellor. Yeah. Unbelievable president. Okay. Athletic director. We're at yeah. six right now. Recruiting great players. In the process of building something great. Mm -hmm. My family has roots here. I love everything about it. That's, yeah. I'm at 10. I love being at A&M. This place has embraced me and my family. The Kids First Fund, which I think pe people- made, has made a big impression on Yeah. You. And I love it here. That's in, just in the opening statement. To me, look, we can, we can say, yeah, you said this, but it could have meant that. Maybe. 
To me, that was a declaration to the world. I'm not interested in LSU. I'm interested in staying here. Uh, maybe he. So then he shouldn't have matter. It shouldn't have bothered him to be pressed on it just a little bit. I think he was bothered. I think. I, think, I don't think so either. Yeah, I don't think he was bothered. But again, the old reporter in me says, "Okay, I gotta let's nail it down." And, and you know, how many times with your wife you say, "Hey, I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna meet at so and so for for lunch or dinner," and or Tori's over there probably had a date. Hey, we set up a date. And but then you call back just one more time, hey, just to make sure that we're still on, right? Right. That's kind of what where I was going with that. Let's make sure that there was no crevice left. Shereen, let's uh, get into the top three Aggies in the NFL from the past week. Let's start at number three. Number three, we're going to go with Ricky Stills Jones. Made a terrific thirty-nine yard touchdown catch. It was a beauty. He finished with four catches for fifty-eight yards and touchdown. Amazed that this guy has bounced around really in the NFL like he has because I think he's a darn good tight end. It has converted and, and really become a, a good tight end in the NFL. Number two, going to go with Christian Kirk, only undefeated team in the NFL. The Cardinals are playing really well, have a lot of receiver options, but Christian Kirk is one of those receiver options. He's played really well, five catches, 75 yards, had the first touchdown for the Cardinals in a big, big, big win over the Browns, which is why we're not picking Miles Garrett, who did have another sack, but they just got run over by that Cardinals team. And then number one, it wasn't Ryan Tannehill's best game of the year last last night, but that was a huge victory uh, for the Titans over the over the Bills, who I thought were the best team in the AFC, and now I think it's probably the Ravens. But uh, he just played well enough for them to win, and, and Derrick Henry went crazy. He passed for 216 yards, did have an interception, but he also ran for a touchdown, and I, I thought just handled everything really well uh, there for the, the Titans, and then they got the win, which was a big one. I mean, it was perfect. If you're an Aggie, it's exactly what you want to hear. Let's put some context to it, though. What he said, and assuming he meant it, because because why wouldn't he? I saw a tweet. Somebody said, well, this is, I think it was Colin Cowherd said, this is how you handle it. This is how every coach should handle it. Well, not every coach has everything they want in their current job. The, the grass is greener because sometimes the grass is greener, right? He, he checked off everything that he has that he loves from the top of the administration to the AD, to the facilities, right? Well, most coaches are in a scenario where they're like, you know, Got a good AD, not sure about the president. Got a good chancellor, not sure about the AD. Got a good chancellor, president, whatever. AD, our facilities aren't great. I'm not getting the support I need. There's something missing at nearly every job. You could probably, I'm sure we could do this on one hand, very unscientifically. Who has everything that they want in terms of building a winner right now in college football? Nick Saban, Devil Swinney, Jimbo Fisher. I think that's about it. You know, I, I think Lincoln Riley wants for facilities. Um, Ryan Day's probably got everything that he wants, right? I mean, we're talking about five, four, five programs in the country where the head coach can stand up there with a straight face and honestly say, I have everything that I want and need right here. And that's not to mention the personal stuff, the ranch the property, the foundation, and that support. But but when it comes to winning football games, great population to draw from and recruit from, fantastic stadium uh, and elite facilities, money to pay your coaching staff and your coordinators. There's not much to want for, and um, and so I thought I thought he made points that were um, relevant. But the reason you don't hear that from other coaches that are in the same situation is because they can't say that with a straight face and mean it because they always need something more. Or if they're high maintenance, they just want something more. So I, I thought it was fantastic. Do you buy some of the reports out there that say that LSU wasn't interested in Jimbo or is it they, they kind of understand that he's not a candidate and that's why they're not interested in Jimbo? I think the second part of your comments probably more likely. Um, and Scott Woodward put the deal together, right? And he's great friends with them. And he knows every word in that contract. So he knows that he could get them. But he also knows the second part of it, which is what Jimbo outlined in the press conference, which is I, I can't draw him here. Um, 
is it's two things. I think LSU is a great program and it's a it's a really good job. But look how they just treated a national championship coach and the limitations that he had on bringing in a staff. If Ed Ogeron had a, a blank checkbook to bring in coordinators like Jimbo has, uh, he'd still have a job right now. I mean, with all due respect to the guys who are there and who have come through the last couple of years since their national championship after Dave Aranda left for Baylor and uh, Joe Brady left for the NFL, if he had an open checkbook, he would he, they would still have been hard to replace, but he would have gotten closer to that level of coordinator. That was the beginning of the end. That was the downfall for, for LSU. Yes, you lost a Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback, and you lost three first-round wide receivers, and you lost an NFL uh, running back and an NFL tight end. Sorry, my puppy is just running crazy. But um, – but you have to be able to pay for coordinators, and and he had handcuffs on. Um, as I mentioned, we're going to get to know a little bit about South Carolina. We're going to talk to Colin Taylor of Gamecock Central uh, to break it all down, part of the Rivals Network. Good morning to you, Colin. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Appreciate you guys having me to talk some football and, and hang out for a little bit. So uh, talk to me about that Vandy game. So I wasn't watching it. Uh, we were at the uh, Missouri game, but uh, it was – Shane Beamer's first SEC win. It was a game that was probably tighter than South Carolina won. It just take me through how that game kind of unfolded. Yeah, um, if you had told me that it would have been a one point game two drives into the the game, I would have wouldn't believe. Just South Carolina came out and scored touchdowns. Were surgical on their first drive and then got an eighty two yard pass play for a touchdown on their second, and then just dried up offensively until the end there and. The defense gave up one too many big plays from a passing standpoint, gave up, I think, four or three or four plays of at least 40 yards in the pass play. Um, and then the offense kind of came to life with Zeb Nolan coming late. Luke Doty didn't look like himself from an injury standpoint. And um, the offense just really struggled again against a really, uh, really bad Vanderbilt team. And uh, you saw the results from that. And I think they were kind of lucky to get out of there with the win the way they played offensively late. Is Shane Beamer being uh, embraced there in the community? Do people like the direction he's taken the program, his style, his substance? Uh, so far, so good. Uh, he's someone that obviously fans relate better with. From a, He was here when they were really good under Spurrier, and so they relate a lot to that. That buys him a lot of goodwill. And, and I think a lot of reasonable fans understand the kind of rebuild this was, the kind of hole that they were in um, compared to what the rest of the SEC and the rest of the SEC East is. Um, So he's been so far so good. I mean, I think he would joke the honeymoon's over at this point and how the fans want to see some progress. And you got five more games the rest of the year to do it. Um, So we'll we'll see how it goes. We're going to do this again. End the segment. What? Yeah, end the segment. End of segment? No, end it. No, 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 but don't do it as me. Don't do it as you. Do it as Olin. <laughs> if I'm Olin, this is not going the way. I no, thought I couldn't. I can't. I can't right. give you Olin like Fine, that. Fine, do it as Billy. Do it as Billy. I'd be careful for you. Um, just do it. Just do it as me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, smash. Sm- hey, smash the likes. Follow. What, what is it? Smash the like button. Yeah, smash the like button. Smash, smash the, like. the like button. What yeah. else? Follow and subscribe. Boom. There we go. And comment. And comment. There you go. Sign up for alerts. Sign up for alerts. I haven't heard. Why are you that looking one. at me? Tell them. That, one, that one's new. I haven't heard. Sign I've been up doing for that. alerts. Well, because you don't watch. Because unless you're <laughs> in it, you don't watch. And uh, tell people to watch and like. Follow, them. like, subscribe. Tell their friends. Just tell your friends, All family, right. everything. This might be the worst video we've ever done, or the best. Thank you, Tomas. There you go.